Hey, this is Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, my channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. In this video, I want to talk about winter hiking and taking some of the mystery out of snowshoeing. Snowshoeing can be a lot of fun. A big part of the reason that I like snowshoeing is that it gets me out in places where other people generally aren't. And if you want to go hiking in the winter, if you're near mountains, the right gear is probably going to consist of snowshoes. If you've never been snowshoeing, it can seem a little mysterious. How exactly do these things work? Are they like the tennis shoes that you tie on your feet like old cartoons? Or are they some kind of high-tech magical device that will allow you to float across fresh powder? So I'm here to give you a bit of a tour of the snowshoe, how they work, a couple tips on how to use them. These are very basic MSR Evos. I got a link in the description below if you want to check them out. First of all, these are a lot lower profile than a tennis racket. And this is good because although you want as much surface area as possible to stay as close to the top of the snow as possible, what you don't want is to be stepping on your own snowshoes or having to radically change the way you hike just because you have them on. So as you can see, these are not super wide. I personally have not had any trouble getting used to having them on as far as going forward. The binding looks complicated, but it's really actually not that bad, especially if you set it up before you go on your first hike. Basically, on these at least, you have a back strap that stays pretty much in the same place all the time. You wanna keep the boot far enough back that when you step forward, this hinge is able to engage. What you wanna make sure is that the toe of the boot isn't hitting the front of the snowshoe. It should actually go into the space behind it. I pictured snowshoes just walking along like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. I didn't realize that you were actually able to keep a pretty normal gait because the snowshoe moves with you. And what that means is on the forward step, even when your toe is pointed down, the snowshoe actually stays level with the snow. Then you just have two straps on top, and these you can actually fasten very quickly and easily with one hand. So as you can see, with one hand, I can disengage the strap entirely, and if I'm looking, <laughs> I can get it back on as well. This is super handy when you are out in the snow and this whole thing is encrusted in ice and snow and you've probably got gloves on, maybe you've got trekking poles in your hand, you don't want straps that you're gonna have to fiddle with. These are quick release and quick fasten. The real key to the ease of use is getting all of these straps dialed in and set up the way you want them before you go on your hike. You typically want the loose ends facing away from you and not facing into each other so that they're not hitting and you're not accidentally kicking a strap off while you're walking. Now on the other side of the snowshoe, you've got these serrated rails that help keep you stable if you're walking across a slope, like on a traverse or something. And then one of my favorite features is this crampon right here that bites into the snow or ice if you're going uphill. I was actually pretty shocked at how easy it was to snowshoe. As soon as I put them on and started going, I just went. Now, there were a couple of surprises. Number one, the snowshoe isn't going to keep you on top of powder. You are going to sink into fresh snow. Until it gets an ice cap or is really densely packed, the snowshoe is mostly keeping you from postholing, which is where the boot goes all the way down and your leg up to your waist, and you basically have to dig yourself out with every single step. But that doesn't mean you're not going to sink. And part of what it means to sink is that the snow will collapse on top, and pretty soon this whole area is just going to be white with snow. So I do recommend boots that are insulated or that are waterproof with maybe some waterproof or very insulated socks. You're basically walking around with an ice pack right on top of your foot, and that can get pretty uncomfortable pretty fast. The other big surprise is what happens when you try to turn around. Now, when you're moving forward, it's pretty intuitive how to move your feet, but when you try to go in reverse or turn around, things change rapidly. Obviously, one of the big problems is you have a whole lot sticking out in front of your foot that you're not used to. And because you feel so natural with the way these move, it's sometimes easy to forget that you've got this big ramp sticking out in front of you. It's also important to remember that with a snowshoe, when your foot is level, the snowshoe isn't. And what that means is that if you're trying to turn around, you might think that you lift a leg up, point your toes up at the air, and turn. Like if you just had a board strapped to your foot. But because a snowshoe has a hinge, a flat foot actually creates a scoop in the back. Which means that if you pick your foot up and try to step backwards, 
this is going to jam in the snow, and over you're going to go. When you want to turn with the snowshoes on, you actually need to point your foot down, which brings these back level again. So you pick your leg up, point your toe down, and then you are able to move around and swivel without the snowshoe digging into the snow. And of course, the same goes for going in reverse. If you want to take steps backwards, you need to do so with your foot pointed down and not trying to keep it level. Otherwise, you're going to dig in and flop over and everyone's going to laugh at you. Falling down in snowshoes is something that is probably going to happen to you, and it is something you're going to want to practice getting out of. I would recommend just going out in your yard, putting your snowshoes on, lying down, and trying to get back up. It is comically difficult, um, but if you have jammed your hand into something freezing cold and wet, and you're starting to get soaked, or if you fall face first into powder and you're starting to panic because you can't get up and you can't breathe, these are not your friend at that time. Of course, one thing you could do is just quickly take the straps off and get up, but then you're left without your snowshoes on. So there are ways to get up and down with the snowshoes. I will link to a few videos on that below because I don't have enough snow around right now to uh, go demonstrate. Plus, you know, I don't fall down. <sighs> Accessories that I do recommend for snowshoes would include full-size waterproof gaiters. Again, unless you are on an ice cap or some hard packed snow, you are going to be submerging your foot in snow when you use snowshoes. And when all that snow comes piling on, you don't want it going down inside your boots. So some good gaiters are a good idea. You will also typically see people snowshoeing with trekking poles. These are very good for balance. Make sure you've got the snow baskets on them and they can be very helpful for self-rescuing yourself out of powder if you fall down and also keeping you from falling down in the first place. All right, that's it. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, would you mind giving the video a like? And if you're not a subscriber, you can subscribe and click that bell if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Until next time, I am Doug. Thanks for watching.